Hey, I'm PMR. I'm here with the A93, and we're going to talk about pre-capture. Intro. All right, so pre-capture literally looks into the past, up to one second in the past. Sounds really cool. It makes an enormous amount of images that you have to delete later, um, but a careful consideration of how and when to use pre-capture is sort of needed. Now, one thing I'm gonna tell you right up front, uh, I always leave my camera set to auto anti-flicker. So if your anti-flicker is on on your camera, you're not gonna be able to access pre-capture at all. So that means if you're going to a field where you, you, you typically use anti-flicker, you're not gonna be able to use pre-capture there. Um, unless you want to fight with, you know, toning all that goofy color after the fact of thousands of images. So you really have to choose between anti-flicker or pre-capture. But let's assume that you're going someplace where there is no flicker. Then you can use pre-capture. When I first got my A93, I couldn't wait to try this out. And I believe I set it for um, seven tenths of a second. And boy, I shot... Uh, a baseball game and I think I made 4,000 pictures in three and a half to four innings it was horrific I had no idea and I, I wasn't even using 120 frames I was using 30 and 60 frames per second so um, this is a acquired taste um, a lot of times people ask me how much is the a93 how much is that new camera well you have to consider the cost of the camera the media that you got to buy for the camera the t you know the CFast type A's then maybe a new computer maybe some hard drive space or some cloud room, you're gonna make a lot of images. So be ruthless in your edit um, and delete everything except only the very best. That's what all of us do in sports photography. But getting back to pre-capture, um, my recommendation is 0.3 seconds or 0.2. So that would be like two tenths of a second back. Um, so let's take a look at the menus just so we can see what we're talking about here. Pre-capture is in the camera setting, which is red. It's on page eight, item 62. Um, there's a great example of why we're not doing a huge long video review of the whole camera. It's just, it's, I think it's just dumb. So we're gonna go to the right and here's pre-capture. So we can turn it on um, and you'll see that mine is set to 0 0.02 seconds. Um, and that's, that's pretty good. I think if you're, if you are really, really good at timing and you're like an AP shooter and you're all over this and you shoot sports every day for a living, 0.1 is probably all you're going to need. I'm not shooting as much as I used to. So 0.2 works better for me. Um, but you can kind of adjust and, and, and see what you get. Uh, so 0.2 is my recommendation. Um, and then pre-capture start trigger. Um, so the, the pre-capture feature um, uses an enormous amount of processor um, speed and RAM uh, because what it's doing when pre-capture is turned on, you're going to see a drop in battery life because the camera is constantly capturing, let's say you're set at 60 frames per second. The camera's constantly, every second, it's capturing 60 frames. Now, if you've got it set to 0.2 or let's say half a second, it's going to be keeping half of those frames at all times. Um, so basically, um, there's another thing you're going to notice too in the viewfinder when you're shooting, um, you're going to see the screen dim. Um, and the screen dims because of the enormous power consumption that's being drawn out of the batteries in order for pre-capture to work with the microprocessor and stuff like that. So even though there's no moving parts inside the A93, other than the shutter release button and the AF on button, um, there's an enormous amount of um, fire hose throughput that's happening at all times when pre-capture is on. So if you find that your battery life sucks, maybe turn it off um, because it's really gonna consume a lot of energy. But remember, when the screen dims, it's not affecting your exposure. And this is something I thought when I first got mine that there was something wrong with the camera and I talked to my buddy Van and he assured me, nope, that's okay. It's the pre-capture that's just drawing energy from the camera. So um, so let's go back into the menu. Um, shutter half press. Um, the other options are AF assigned button 
or both valid. The shutter half press is fine for me. I find that works great. And remember, I'm not using, this does not activate autofocus. Um, 99 of 100 photographers that shoot sports are gonna only use back button focus. Uh, you can fight me about that in another video for another day, um, but that's the truth. 99 out of 100, probably more actually. Um, so when you hit this button, that's when pre-capture is gonna be beginning. And that's when you'll start seeing that screen slightly dim. There is not an exposure change. So like it might freak you out the first couple times you see it, but it's okay. So uh, my best uh, advice for you is to use pre-capture for tennis, go shoot tennis to practice or golf swings. And because tennis has so much more contact with the ball, uh, if you shoot tennis singles, just go to a local, you know, local uh, city park or something like that and just shoot tennis for a half an hour um, and then go back and look at your images. This is how you'll be able to kind of walk in what amount of time on the other side of that second is what's going to be good for you. But I think when I first started, I was at, I was at seven tenths of a second, which was way too long. Um, I just burned all these frames and it just filled up the card. And it, it took me as long to edit the take as it did to shoot the job. So, <laughs> so be careful with that. Um, so I hope this has helped you. If you have questions or comments, I don't know everything. So if there's something I missed or a mistake I made, go ahead and put it in the comments below. Outro.